Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Nitro Team Pro, the big brother to the team. This board features Nitro's true camber, which is just good old fashioned traditional camber. So from contact point to contact point, you have that arc of traditional camber. That's gonna give you all the load, pop, snap, and drive for this board. This board is available in 146, 149, 152, 155, 157, 159, 162, 157 wide, 159 wide, 162 wide, 165 wide. I rode this board at Arapahoe Basin on a sunny bluebird day that had moderate winds, you had warmer temps, you had chopped chunder, a little bit of frozen corduroy perfect hero snow, and I rode it with my Rome black label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. This board is on the stiffer side of all mountain freestyle. You do have tiny amounts of play in the tip and the tail. There's about a two inch sweet spot out by the contact points that really just lets you press into it. Then it stiffens up through the middle. The torsional flex is there and it's got a lot of snap and rebound to it just due to the carbon in this board. And that plays into the stability of it as well. Micro vibrations resonate through this board right up underfoot. You're gonna feel it. Sure, you're gonna get chatter in the nose at high speed and you notice that you get a little bit of flap. That adds to that reverberation right underfoot. When you get into rutted out terrain, for the most part, this board just plows through it or skips across the top. But if you take a really hard hit, all that jarring just puts that energy right back up underfoot. So with this board being traditional camber, you have to load it up to get pop. And when you roll back on the tail, you hit that sweet spot right before the contact point. There's a slight delay before it engages, but once it does, you snap and this board just boosts. This board wants to get in the air. You're gonna be able to launch off everything and send it to the moon. Now, when it comes to jumps, I only got to hit something that can best be described as a questionable jump, which was probably on the small side. Now I know it was definitely on the small side. And it just overshot it. This board is really designed for bigger features. It's gonna pop off that lip and just send you higher and further. This is a board that really, really wants to boost. That flex point in the tips is great for locking into butters. You basically just push into it, it engages, it flexes. You're gonna feel the rebound of the board trying to fight you, but what that does is it gives you snap out of any butter that you're actually doing. Basically, you're gonna keep it to just stock butters, nothing super crazy, but it's gonna hold and then pop you out. When it comes to jimming, a little speed goes a long way with this board. You do have those sweet spots and it locks in, but that rebound of the board takes over at the end and you're just gonna be able to pop out and over whatever is in the landing. And when you go sideways, this board does more of a balancing act on the feature. Instead of like cradling right around it, you're gonna notice that right away. The way I look at it is this is more like a slope style type of jib stick where you're just gonna go fast and keep it to stock tricks. This board rolls from edge to edge with zero effort. It really lets you ankle steer it with very minimal energy. You notice right away that you're just transitioning smoothly, but when you go to drive it from the back foot through the center of the board, you get a ton of power and it really snaps out of the carve. Short, tight, quick carves are really its strong suit, but when you're gonna rail it and lay it over, you've got that power for when you absolutely need it, so you can leave a trench in your path. Who's this board for? The all-mountain freestyle guy that wants some serious power. Here's the thing about this board. The upgrade from the regular team is very minimal. You just get more power, more rebound, and just a little bit more snap, that's it. For most people, they're probably going to notice the snap more than anything, but otherwise it rides fairly similar to the regular team, just a little bit more lively due to the carbon in there. It's not a bad thing, but the price upgrade, in my opinion, it just doesn't seem to work for me to be like, oh yeah, it's totally worth it for me to go recommend this to everyone. I think it's a good board and there are the right people out there, but most people probably just need the regular team. Comparable boards, the Solomon Assassin Pro, the Jones Ultra Mountain Twin, the Capita Super DOA. Binding recommendations, the Nitro Team Pro, the Now Select Pro, the Union Atlas. 
This has been my review of the Nitro Team Pro. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.